Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to part 29 of Quranic Contemplations where we're going to be looking at selected verses from the 29th verse of the Quran and reflecting and contemplating their meaning. The first verse we're going to be looking at is in Surah Qalam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says inna lil muttaqeen inda rabbihim jannatin na'in Indeed, for the righteous with their Lord are the gardens of pleasure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he describes the gardens of paradise as gardens of pleasure. And I wanted to talk about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically describes them as gardens of pleasure. Out of all the words he could have used, why specifically does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention pleasure? Uh, and from the things we can learn, is that when Allah Azza wa Jal talks about these gardens of paradise being, gar being gardens of pleasure, it's a reminder to us about how temporary the pleasure of this world is. Even though we experience pleasure in this world from the uh, comforts that we may have in our homes, uh, with our spouses, with our family members, the comfort we feel and the pleasure we have with our friends, uh, the pleasure we experience uh, going out or you know visiting certain places or you know doing certain things, all those types of pleasures that we may be experiencing, whether it's going somewhere, sightseeing, going to the beach, or with specific individuals who are close to us, all those pleasures are actually temporary. You're never going to be. Uh, content and have 100% pleasure all the time. In fact, you may have pleasure you know, in, uh, for one minute and then the next minute you'll have moments of sadness because of certain things you've seen or heard. So the pleasure we experience in this world is, t is temporary. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the gardens of the akhirah are gardens of pleasure, jannat in naim and the pleasure that Allah Azza wa Jal is using to describe the gardens of paradise is the pleasure which has no end, a pleasure which is complete and perfect and there is no sadness or displeasure or you know, an, uh, discomfort in any way whatsoever when it comes to uh, the experiences a person will feel in paradise on the day of judgment once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters him into Jannah al-Firdaus or the, the stations of paradise and hopefully the highest stations of paradise. So when a person is in paradise the pleasure he experiences are actually different to the pleasures he experiences in this world. Why? Because they're permanent. A person will always experience pleasure. He'll never ever experience displeasure ever again. The second verse I wanted to focus on was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, glorifying him and he says, In Surah Mudathir, verse number three. This verse is a beautiful verse. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us to glorify him, to praise him, uh, to uh, use his name and worship him through uh, making takbir of his name. But what I wanted to focus on was something more linguistic, which is something known as a palindrome. A palindrome is when a word reads the same backwards as it does forwards. So for example, mom backwards is the same, dad backwards is the same. Also race car, which is the same forwards that is, as it is backwards. And the meaning of this verse in Surah Mudathir, وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِرْ is essentially glorify the name of your Lord. Glorify your Lord. وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ Glorify your Lord. And this is also a kind of palindrome, meaning it's the same forwards as it is backwards. The name, the letters which are used are the same backwards as they are forwards. So if we start, for example, with the Ra, the Wa means and, رَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ Glorify your Lord. The first and last letter are Ra. The second to last letter and the second letter are Ba. The third letter and the third to last letter are Kaf. And then in the middle we have the letter Fa. And this is a palindrome 
because the words have the same letters backwards as they do forwards. And no other language will you have the sentence glorify your Lord as a palindrome with the same letters backwards as they are forwards. Yet we have this in the Arabic language in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, this shows us the beauty and the linguistic miracle of the Quran. The third verse we're going to be looking at finally is Surah Nuh verses 10 to 12. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about Nuh alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam told his people, Istaghfir rabbakum innahu kana ghaffaro. That he said, ask forgiveness for your Lord, make istighfar, say astaghfirullah. Verily he is the most forgiving. Uh, and then he mentions the benefits of a person who makes istighfar. Yusir al-sama alaykum bidirara. That he will send abundance of uh, showers of uh, rain from the sky. And he will increase you in wealth. And children. And so this actually shows us the benefits of making istighfar. And this is why the scholars they say that when a person makes istighfar, he increases in risk and provision. In fact, one of the scholars, Imam al-Hassan al-Basri, somebody approached him and they asked him, uh, the, the sky isn't bringing down any, any rain. So he was complaining to Imam al-Hassan al-Basri. So Imam al-Hassan al-Basri, he said to him, make istighfar. And somebody else came and he said to him, I don't have money, I'm suffering from poverty. He said, make istighfar. Another came and said, I don't have any children. My wife is barren. He said, make istighfar. And so the, the students of Imam al-Hassan Basri, they asked him every single time somebody came with an issue, you just kept on saying, make istighfar, the same advice you gave all three of these people, even though they had different problems. And then he recited this verse. Istaghfiru rabbakum, faqultu istaghfiru rabbakum, innahu kana ghafara. Say, I seek, uh, Nuh al -Islam said, ask forgiveness for your Lord, make istighfar. Indeed, he is ever forgiving. What are the benefits of istighfar? Allah will send down rain from the skies in abundance. And He'll increase you in wealth and in children. So these are the benefits of making istighfar. Simply making istighfar can increase you in your risk, in your provision, in your sustenance. And that's the power of making istighfar, something which the Messenger of Allah would do 70 to 100 times every single day. And also, in another verse, there's another benefit of making istighfar, of saying astaghfirullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in Surah Hud, He says, وَيَا قَوْمِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ And he mentions some of, the, some of the same benefits we've already mentioned. And then he says, وَيَا زِدُكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ And he will increase you in strength on top of the strength that you already have. And some of the Mufassirun, they say the Quwa mentioned here, isn't necessarily strength in Iman and faith, which is of course one of the things that a person will strengthen when he makes istighfar, but it's also referring to shidda. Shidda meaning physical strength, meaning a person could increase in physical strength when he makes istighfar. So all of these benefits simply from making istighfar. And this shows us the virtues of istighfar and how true the advice of the Messenger of Allah was when he told us to make istighfar based on his own example. Jazakumullah khair for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.